Hello YouTube, welcome to part 2 of my tutorial on uh, building a wood fire oven. Okay, so this is the platform we uh, we constructed and uh, you can see on the top of the platform here I've uh, just done a chalk marking um, of the dimensions of the oven and uh, once the marking was done uh, I set about with a layer of uh, silicone uh, putting a layer of silicone over it uh, because between this foundation and the heat which is uh, on the floor of the oven you need some kind of insulation so what I did was I uh, uh, initially just put some silicone down there you know just for some uh, adhesive effect and then uh, we put a rock wool layer there so there's the rock wool now that's been cut to size uh, uh, so and while I, if you want to try this I just want to uh, remind you that rock wool is uh, is quite brittle actually you know it's not flexible at all and it's also made up these little little tiny fibers of uh, you know these fiberglass fibers or something like that so they can cause a lot of skin itching uh, and uh, you know if the powder gets in your eye it can be uh, uh, quite a serious irritant so I highly recommend you use gloves goggles or a mask all right so once the rock wool was down it's time to mix the cement and uh, Depending on the nature of cement you're using, I guess your mixture will change. But for me, it was one part cement, uh, two parts fire clay, and three parts sand. All right. Now, you got to get the consistency right. So here I am. I'm just trying to demonstrate to you. So this is obviously too liquidy. So I'm slowly adding more of the dry mixture. And uh, I ended up finally with this type of consistency. So you can see it here. It's like a kind of very thick, uh, almost like a cake batter, I guess you could say. But um, even with that, I did end up with cracks, like you can see here. So the cracks are because there's too much water in the in the mixture. So I just want to advise you against, you know, get uh, advise you to get the mixture right. Uh, not that these cracks are any, uh, you know, they're causing any structural issues, but um, you know, you should try and avoid them. Okay. So once that's done, I put started layering the cement on top of the uh, on top of the rock wool base like this okay and uh, and then we start placing the bricks in the herringbone pattern okay so what would be better than this is to actually put some kind of metal frame down between the rock wool and the cement you know and that actually gives the cement much more structural rigidity i didn't do that and on uh, in hindsight if I, I i should have thought about doing that uh, but it's it's still it's it's not really an issue because this uh, the rock wool is quite firm. So anyway, here are the bricks going down in the herringbone pattern. Um, try to be careful when you put them down. Try to minimize the gap between the bricks. Um, and uh, okay, so here we are. This is the first layer. So that's the first layer of bricks. You can see the herringbone pattern there. And then around that, I've started building the actual dome of the oven. Okay, I apologize for all this animation that's happening. I really don't know how uh, why it's happening when I try to rotate pictures. But anyway, this is the front arch now. Uh, and I used a plywood uh, sort of template that I built to actually support the arch while it's drying. So again, these are wedge-shaped bricks and the two edges are a little too triangular bricks. Okay, here's a view from the top. Uh, here's the that template again, which is supporting the arch until it dries fully. Okay, so now we are two layers up. You can see the wedge-shaped bricks, the floor of the oven. Uh, you can see this, this, um, the two side walls coming up. Okay, so now uh, if you look on the far side, you can see um, uh, two uh, bricks which look a little different and they've got holes in them. So this is part of an experiment I was doing. Yeah, see, so now I'm closing up. You can see them now clearly. Uh, Two different uh, kind of bricks so this is uh, I just thought I wanted to add a little bit of my uh, own innovation in here so those are air holes and I'm hoping that when when um, you know when the door of the oven is closed and I still need air to enter the oven for the fire I can control the intensity of the flames with those air holes so that's just an experiment I was trying out and I'll show you later that it actually worked out quite well okay here's the view from from inside the oven actually again and uh, you can see the back of the f the front arch all right now this is a trammel which I used okay 
I use this trammel because uh, you need to be able to make sure that the curvature of the dome you get is more or less, uh, you know, even and, you know, spherical curvature. It shouldn't. So building a dome is not really an easy uh, task. So you need you need a kind of guide. OK, so over there I've used a caster wheel from a robot uh, wheel, you know, like uh, just a caster wheel that you might find on a trolley or something. So that allows the trammel to move um, up and down as well as, uh, you know, right and left. And as the layers of brick keep building up, it'll keep going up and making sure that, uh, uh, you know, the bricks are in line with each other and, this, and the spherical structure of the dome is, is maintained. Okay. I also use these two battens to kind of, uh, initially I used to uh, set these two battens there to kind of make sure that the all the bricks were at the same level. But um, I guess my masonry skills weren't good enough and somewhere in between I just gave up using those battens. But the trammel worked perfectly. Okay, so here we are, we're about uh, four or five layers in now. And uh, as you can see, the trammel is doing a good job. Um, uh, the way I was uh, using it and uh, it's given me quite a nice spherical structure. All right, so those two uh, air hole bricks, I've just cut off the excess that were there. Um, you can see the inner arch has also started uh, coming up now. It's it's complete actually. Um, and uh, there's still some supports there holding both the arches in place. Here's another picture showing the outer arch, the front arch, the inner arch and the spherical structure. I think we're about six or seven layers up now. Okay, so problem number one, uh, how to fit the chimney. So I'm using this, uh, it's actually a water jug, earthenware water jug. I thought that'll make a nice chimney. So the first problem is how do you fix the chimney to the arches like this? So uh, I couldn't figure out, you know, a place on YouTube that showed me how to do it. So I just put that aside for the moment. But that is an issue I will have to deal with. Uh, you know, I, I would have had to deal with initially. Okay, so here's the oven again from the top and uh, just another picture okay now as the dome starts um, getting more and more towards the top you'll notice the bricks curve a little bit more so you need to support those bricks uh, somehow so I cut these battens out of uh, just pieces of um, uh, beading actually and uh, there you can see now so the next layer is done and each brick is just held in place until the the cement act the concrete sets and it's held in place by a batten so I think the next two layers I, I do like this and uh, so you have to wait until the cement sets before you move on to the next layer so between layers probably takes about you know two days or that kind of time interval it's just to make sure that the bricks don't fall in while they are setting but once it's set, it, this structural integrity is, uh, is pretty okay. Okay, now the problem here I'm showing with my hand is, you can see the curvature of the topmost layer. So it's almost like a you know circular curvature, but the arch itself is, is flat and straight. So... How do you join a flat structure to a curved structure, you know? Again, I looked on YouTube, you know, some stop motion videos are there of people building wood fire ovens. I couldn't really figure out. So that's another problem I'll have to solve. Okay, now here I'm watering the uh, the, the concrete as it sets. This is important. You've got to do it twice a day. Concrete only sets properly if it's wet. So if you live in a hot place, you got to put some kind of uh, jute bags over it to make sure it's damp all the time. Uh, luckily for us, we didn't have to do that. We live in quite a cool place. But you have to keep watering the the, the concrete as it sets. Okay. Um, all right. Here's the issue with the chimney again. So I thought about cutting some templates out of these bricks. And so I just, uh, you know, made a rough template with a piece of cardboard. And uh, so there's the cardboard now on top of the inner arch. Okay. So it's just a template cut out of cardboard. I placed it on the inner arch, okay, and I just wanted to see how, so if you now look now, you can see that it's actually conforming to the curvature of the, uh, you know, the curvature of the, the spherical part of the dome. So that's pretty encouraging. Um, and I was, uh, I, you know, figured this might be a good way to go. 
and especially because I just couldn't figure out, find out, find on YouTube a video which actually showed how to do this. Connect a flat arch to a curved uh, dome. All right, here we go. So the there's three bricks which have been cut um, into the shape of that uh, template the best I could cut it. And I find that uh, when I put, uh, so the bricks are on the inner arch now. And uh, all of a sudden the chimney also seems to have, have come in place quite nicely. So this is just now roughly just placed over there. It's not, uh, I haven't set it with uh, concrete. But you can see this, it seems to be a workable solution. Okay, so here we are again now three on the inner arch. So there's three bricks cut to shape. And you can see that uh, the curvature should be smooth. And, you know, and I, I should be able to build now the rest of the, the next layer of the, of the spherical dome, which earlier I couldn't do because of the junction between that flat arch and the curved uh, inner surface of the dome. But also you can see here, so this is a irregular kind of shaped gap. Um, so the, I have to probably cut some, a piece of brick into some funny kind of shape to make it fit into that gap. Um, so that's what I did. I just uh, cut a little wedge kind of brick piece, put it in there. So now you can see I've built up one more layer. Um, there's still a hole there. There's a gap there. Uh, I think this video was taken just before I filled it. Anyway. So that I just filled, I just put a little, you know, a uh, scrap uh, piece of brick that I had lying around. I just fitted and just jammed it in there with some concrete. So that worked out well. And uh, the chimney is also sitting nicely. I uh, just shaped a brick to make it look a little um, aesthetic. Uh, you know, just kind of uh, almost like a sort of V-shaped brick, upside down V. So there's the chimney sitting on top and the front part you can see that uh, brick which I've shaped and on the back it's sitting on those uh, on the three bricks that were template cut. Okay so here's the oven almost completed actually. Uh, yeah uh, all the gaps have been filled and uh, so but there is an issue here so if you just look at this so the rest of the oven is complete except for this um, the topmost part, you can see there, there's a big hole over there. And uh, the issue with the hole is, I know my masonry skills are not good enough to stick bricks so that they're almost horizontal and have them, um, you know, stay in place while they dry. So this is another problem I had to solve. And uh, so I just left it for, for, for the time being while it was setting, while I, you know, figure out how to try and solve this. So I was figuring out, I was thinking about how to cover the dome, you know, the last, the uppermost hole that I showed you in the previous uh, section. So I looked on YouTube, couldn't figure out a way, couldn't find a way on YouTube. And uh, so I had to just kind of improvise. So what I did was I used one of these and uh, I apologize, I didn't actually take a video while I was doing it. But this is basically just a kind of basin and uh, in India we use these for mixing um, concrete and things like that moving it from one place to the other so I took one of these newspaper at the bottom so that the concrete wouldn't stick to this this surface all right and I have a brick here this is a refractory brick similar to the one I used but I had cut into wedge shapes so if you could imagine this in in a wedge shape thing so I had four wedge shapes two here like this and then these two um, on this side. So there were four wedge shapes and a small piece in the center um, and then little smaller pieces in the four corners like this. So uh, it was uh, again wedge shaped so as to conform with the with the with the you know the spherical structure of the dome and uh, they were held in place by concrete which I sort of pushed into the gaps and uh, and then I left it to dry and uh, just like the like the rest of the dome, I watered it uh, every day, waited for about a week for it to fully set. And once it was set, uh, I just sort of turned it over like that. And uh, the whole structure just popped out on the ground. And then I just picked that up. So if you can imagine now, this is the structure. Of course, it's full, but it has a, the bottom of it would have been like this. So I just pick it up like that and I just 
put it into that hole and I made sure that this basin that I used, the circumference, the outer circumference was bigger than the hole. So there's no way it can actually just fall through the hole. It just sits nice and tight in there. And then I sealed it on the outside with uh, more concrete and clay, fire clay. So that's how I finished off the top of the dome. And then what I'll do now is I'll take you to the oven and I'll show you the, the inside of this so that you'll get a better idea of how exactly this sat in that hole. So now that you've seen the cement mixing dome, uh, the, the the sort of basin that I used and how I set that up, I just want to show you the inside of the oven. So you can see the dome structure from the inside and uh, you can see little bits where my masonry work is a little sloppy. But even though it looks like there are gaps there, it's sealed from the outside. I can reach from the outside, but I couldn't quite reach from the inside to um, fill those gaps in perfectly. The lower layers are easy to do, but as you get higher and higher, it's a bit difficult. So I had to kind of lean inside the oven and put my hands in there. So that's why it's a little sloppy. But if you see on top, that's how I've actually closed off the dome with that uh, cement basin, uh, which I, uh, into which I'd put wood shaped uh, bricks, um, sorry, wedge shaped bricks and, uh, you know, sealed it up, made sure it was dry once it was good and dry, I just had to lower it in. And because the outside circumference is bigger than the inside circumference, there's no way that it can actually fall in. Um, even though it looks like there are big gaps, they're actually sealed from the outside because that's accessible. I couldn't put my hand in from here and reach all the way inside. So it looks like it's, uh, it's not seated well at all, but actually there's no chance of it falling in. Uh, and it's tightly wedged in there. Um, and the outside is sealed perfectly, so there's there's no heat loss or um, you know smoke or anything coming out from that side, uh, from this structure. So that's the that's how I actually finished off the topmost part, because I'd looked on YouTube and uh, I couldn't find any videos on how people actually finished off the top of the dome. So I just had to kind of improvise, and so this is my solution, uh, and it works pretty well actually. There's no issues really, and the rest of the dome is pretty okay. Um, there's no uh, there are no gaps and uh, it works really well all right so here's now the chimney structure I don't know if you can see this okay so all right so here's the outer arch all right and then there's a little gap and then over here is the inner arch so there's a this is the outer arch brick this one there's a gap here uh, which is again just filled with wedged bricks and uh, here's the inner arch and this is the arch that actually connects to the to the spherical structure of the dome. And then on top, so between the two arches, uh, it's diff very difficult to see, there you are. Between the two arches, uh, so let me see if I can point it out to you. That's the inner arch. This is the outer arch and there's the chimney structure. And so uh, it works pretty well. All the smoke um, goes out from from that hole over there but we did find that so this is the the, the earthenware uh, jar which I used people usually use this for putting drinking water in so I just cut out the bottom and that's the hole you can see and uh, initially it just used to sit like this but we found that the smoke was actually coming out and then filling up the gazebo structure and uh, that was a little annoying. So what I did was I just bought one of these kitchen uh, exhaust pipes and I've just fitted it and it just leads outside the gazebo over there. So the smoke all goes out. So that's basically it the, for, the, for the inner dome and uh, the exhaust hole on top. Can you see that? Yeah, that's the exhaust hole. So that's the inside structure of the, the oven. And uh, you can't really see the herringbone pattern because there's a lot of ash on the floor. I haven't cleaned it since the last use. But uh, it's worked out really well, this sort of herringbone structure. Okay, so once the structure of the oven is ready, you let it set. So we had to wait about uh, two to three weeks, pouring water every day, making sure the inside and outside were nicely doused with water. Uh, so the cement is set and now you can see I've put a layer of silicone over it. And that's to get ready for the next layer of insulation. So one more layer of rock wool 
again, you can see this rock wool is pretty nasty stuff to work with because uh, not just the fact that it powders and gets in your eye if you're not wearing the proper protection, but it's difficult to kind of fit it around a spherical surface. So just use some lashing wire. You can see that some sort of structure is coming. Uh, you can see. All right. So over that, we then uh, tighten this net of chicken wire. Okay. And, uh, you know, try to pack it in as tight as we could. So here's the final thing, uh, the final uh, arrangement with the chicken wire, lashing wire and the rock wool. So pretty much a spherical structure. And that's, this, you have to do this, you cannot avoid it because you really need uh, as much insulation so that you trap as much heat in there as possible. And then finally a layer of uh, concrete goes on top and that just makes the outer shell. So, uh, you know, you need a lot of con concrete for this um, and uh, you just cover the entire thing with an outer shell. And here we are, here's the final uh, oven. And so you wait a little bit longer, maybe about two or three weeks more to allow it to dry properly and then you can set a test fire. Right in front, uh, I've done some decorative work, uh, just some Atangudi tiles which were left over from our house building and uh, some granite, uh, uh, you know, tiles that, we, you know, just leftover stuff from uh, when we built our house, just to make it look, uh, look nice. So that's the complete build.